You're right, uh, not the not the front for all of the uh, Elizabethan royalty. I don't know. Well, okay, we'll let them have their movie. And then also uh, Hampstead, which is a uh, quirky, uh, late in life love drama, starring Diane Keaton and Brendan Fraser. Uh, fun thing happened at the Northwest Film Studies Center. Uh, um, the uh, uh, Between the Lines and Crossing the Lancy are being shown as part of a tribute to the director. Uh, all her third, uh, uh, th oh, she has a third film that's also going to be shown, and um, uh, it's uh, pretty exciting. Between the Lines is one of my favorite movies because it's set in the world of the of, of alternative newspapers, mm. like. Uh, the old Berkeley Barb and things like, papers like that from the 60s. And uh, they're also showing Jacques Rivette's Le Religieuse, or The Nun, which is a typically uh, very long Jacques Rivette film uh, uh, set in the convent. And finally, we're getting close to the end. Hollywood is showing The Secret of Nim, another animated film. Uh, before Stonewall, a documentary about uh, gay life in the United States, or at least New York, and up to 1968. Uh, Resident Evil, another one of my favorite movies. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, last two days of the Portland International Horror Festival. So uh, you can catch up and find out who won what and which were the best films. So uh, opening this week in the big theaters are X-Men Dark Phoenix, which I found somewhat incomprehensible, but that's probably because I haven't seen the last two X-Men films and didn't know what the relationships were. So I, mean, I think they're trying to start over in a way, because they kind of like messed up, the, not messed up the storyline, <laughs> but just took the storyline to yeah. a I feel like they're world. always trying to start over. Yeah. yeah. How many, how many Spider-Man origin films have we seen? Too many. Well, three. A lot. <laughs> so far. But they're all different, each Spider-Man, from I know. Tobey Maguire to... I can't remember this new one's name. No one. Well, the no animated one was really good. Though. Yeah, the animated. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, late night is appearing on Amazon. That's a, a show. That's a, a, a movie about a late night talk show um, with. Uh, uh, I give people a frat, so I'm not having trouble remembering who's in it. Isn't that Mindy Kaling? Yes. Yeah. I don't remember the other actress that she was in. Um, Stranger than fiction. Yes, and, and she wrote and starred in uh, Pride, the adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Yes. Her name's going to be coming to me in about 17 minutes. So many yeah, I'll just pop in and with a name when I get a chance. And um, The Secret Life of Pets, number two, is also oh, yeah. opening this today. And next week, <laughs> excitement from the, from the peanut gallery. <laughs> um, on uh, DVD coming this, the 11th. Tuesday, Tuesday, DVD Tuesday, is uh, uh, Captain Marvel, finally, so everybody can read the extras and see how that happened to be made. Um, a sensitive drama about the relationship of a man with his horse, the Mustang, a captive state, a uh, drama about the, the dystopian future set in Chicago, and finally season six of Orange is the New Black, mm -hmm. which means that there's a new season coming up in a few uh, few weeks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they sometimes they don't live their welcome, which makes me wonder why shows like uh, oh, um, uh, Big Bang Theory and a few others uh, stay on or 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 um, the the those Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. They're oh, in wow. for two more seasons and I will faithfully watch because oh, okay. I've watched forever but no. it's I'm <laughs> over it. <laughs> <I'm>, really? <laughs> so d w w where, where do they go awry usually? Uh, Wait, Grey's yeah, in a show like Grey's Anatomy, where do they go? It just for the first like seven seasons, they give you all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in it, you're surprised, you're shocked, you're sad, you're happy, mm -hmm. and then there's nowhere else to go because you surprise me for like seven whole seasons where I'm yeah, like so stuck. Much drama. Nobody yeah, has, like, I mean. I'm, I hope no one's life is filled with that much. That's <laughs> great. Meredith Grey should not have to go through all of this. Yeah. <laughs> she should not have to be this traumatized. No. But I'll still watch. <laughs> well, speaking of trauma, we are now at the sad moment of the show where we do a roll call of those who have recently passed away.
Fortunately, this week there's only one person, and that is Dr. John, uh, the musician born uh, uh, Malcolm John Rebenach in New Orleans. He lived to be 77, and there is a movie connection. Um, he appeared as himself in a lot of movies, including The Last Waltz, Blue, uh, Blues Brothers, and the HBO show Treme, set in New Orleans. But his music has appeared in numerous films. For example, he sang the theme song to Curious George. He, uh, his song Right Place, Wrong Time appeared in Days and Confused, along with numerous other uh, topical hits of the time. He, his music appeared in the TV show True Blood, which is also an HBO show, and show. set in New Orleans, <laughs> and uh, also in Holes, the, the really surprisingly effective uh, kid movie. That's an amazing movie. Yeah. I don't watch it to this I day. call it a kid's movie, but yeah. I don't think it's really necessarily it's kind just of, for kids. It's kind of out there. Yeah. Wrong, I mean, not wrongly accused. Well, he was wrongly accused. Went to juvie or yes. that, so. Now we get to talk about uh, Open Signal and what's happening this coming Friday. Okay. So uh, perhaps you could uh, 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 perhaps you could explain a little bit of what Open Signal does. It, it has always been called Open Signal? No, it mm. originally was Portland Community Media. And okay. then, uh, I believe in the last two to three years it changed over to Open Signal. Okay. So basically beforehand when it was um, Portland Community Media, it focuses more on like public access. <laughs> local channel but I know that they do like a lot of the city um like, like the board meetings yes, and stuff right, like that right. too so I wish I had a clearer answer for that but it, and, well the answer is available uh, on opensignal.org no yes mm -hmm. open signal pdx pdx that's, that's right that's right okay good and um will your show movie be shown on the Cable access channel associated with it? That's a good question. I mean, that's gonna be, that would be up to her if she oh, okay. wanted to, but for yes, the most yes. part, it will be on the If it's up to me, then yeah. yes. <laughs> so, um, there, if, there are six filmmakers. Yes. If I remember you yes. saying that right. And they'll all be present this uh, a week from tonight at uh, the Hollywood showing their films. And those films were all produced under the auspices of the technology available to fellows at uh, Open Signal Studios. Is, am I saying that So correctly? let me go back. So basically what we did with this fellowship is that we are supporting six black filmmakers based here in Portland. Mm -hmm. And then at the screening, yes, we'll be showing some of their work. All of it will not be based off of what oh, happened in the fellowship. Okay. This is to more show, show that there are people here, there are black people here, brown people here that want to, you know, compete at a higher level, yeah. make good work. You know, and just know that th this is here, this is happening, you know, don't ignore us. So yeah. that's really more so what the screening and that, you know, is about, not necessarily the actual, you know, yeah. what we did with the cameras we have. And right, it. right. Uh, besides tomorrow, what is, who are some of the other filmmakers? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I always get names wrong. It's okay. Tamara. 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 Like Tamara. Tamara. Oh, okay. Air you breathe. Okay. Tamara. Excellent. Okay, good tip. All right, so uh, uh, who are the other five filmmakers? Uh, one's name is Dustin Tolman, Sika Stanton, Cameron Fall, Noah Thomas, and Elijah Hassan. Okay, and they're, are they all short films? Or uh, is there a feature thrown in there? There's a range. There's some short, we're working on some short films, there's some narrative work, and some documentary as well. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's, one of the, what's one of the documentaries about? Um, one of them is about a farm here in Portland. Well, not in Portland, but in Oregon. It's like a little yeah, outskirt yeah, farm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. southern, more southern. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of it, just come to the screening and see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tamara, can you talk about your film? And first, starting with the title. Don't give it all away, though. I'm yeah. not going to give it all away. <laughs> no spoilers. Um, so it is kind of like a short, uh, no, not, not kind of, it is a short film kind of, uh, commenting on the rainy weather in Portland. Oh, that's all I'm. <laughs> okay, that's good because yeah. that that provides a good segue into uh, what you did on your spring vacation, mm -hmm. which was to go to Togo. Right. Yes, uh, I went to Togo uh, in West Africa, and I uh, just spent time with the people there and really like. Uh, tried to involve myself with the the, the family that I was with, mm -hmm. okay. um, and their and their culture and their food and their experiences, uh, for about like what fifteen days I think, and a really amazing time. Uh, I just 
I wouldn't trade that experience. Sometimes I get speechless, sometimes I don't. <laughs> so I, I like, I really never thought that at the top of this year I would be going there. So I was really blessed and grateful to go. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to plan the next trip to go back. For those who are only listening to the show, uh, Tamara's face is alive with smiles. <laughs> yeah. She thinks so highly. Uh, and you were there during the celebration of Togo's independence. Independence, yeah. What's I think either, this is their either 59th year mm. going into their 60th or something like that. I who, think uh, so. who who colonized them? Uh, the French, French colonized okay. them. So. <laughs> right. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a bittersweet for me because yeah. for some reason I have this want to learn French fluently mm -hmm. and to go to the country where they were colonized by them and then like they're getting their freedom back. Yeah. It's kind of interesting it was it was, a, it was kind of weird but, not weird but uh they spoke french i don't speak french at all uh, but it was nice hearing at least some of the language yeah uh, exactly mixed yeah. in with their, right. their native tongue so uh and I, the reason i segued from the rain is because you as we were talking before you uh woke up at three in the morning to the yeah. only rain that occurred in that whole time you were there. Yeah, I woke up 3 in the morning because it was thunder and lightning, and I was just so excited because I'm from the south, and so we and, and I went to school in Florida. Mm, so, so the rain is like it's there, and here you don't really get thunder and lightning, so I was very excited when it started raining there. I had to record it. So. Yeah. yeah, okay. So can you incorporate that footage into your mysterious... We'll see what happens. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, so I wonder what auspices did you go know there? Hmm? How, uh, uh, under what auspices did you go there? Uh, open Signal. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. We yeah. were supporting her to go on the trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and did you keep your camera uh, by your side? I kept my Polaroid. Polaroid I wanted okay. to get the like an old school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the country was welcoming and has uh, varied terrain and very active urban yeah, life. Yeah, they were so friendly. They look at you in your eyes. One, because you're foreign to them and they don't know who you are, but they're really like... I uh, want to welcome you and uh, like talk to you, um, so it was very welcoming. Yeah, well, that's very fantastic. Nice. Yeah. When are you gonna go back, or do you? Go I don't know. I was crying when I left. Oh. I was kind of sad. <laughs> so is Togo the see. only one you're interested in visiting? No. Would you like uh, to go this? Yeah, I have many, many more. Um, I can't name them because I want to go to all. <laughs> if I have the, the the means to go to them all, yeah. that would be amazing. Some of them might be a little iffy. Yeah. Because uh, of the. I mean, everywhere is a little. Everywhere. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, I don't yeah, even that. want to go to Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what's next for Open Signal? You've done, you've given fellowships, grants to these six filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, uh, is there another, oh, I don't know, period of time where are, people can apply for well, the grants? I mean, for sure, we're going to do this again. We also want to keep this as an ecosystem. So once these fellows. Um, well, after this fellowship, you know, I don't want to use the word ends, but we'll bring in a new group. Yes. But the ones that are already originally a part of the group, you know, they'll still have access to the cameras, access to open signal. So we're still formulating how that will go and then how to bring in the, this new group of people. Because, you know, in filmmaking, it's a team. It's not just a one. I mean, now people do film by itself, but <laughs> by nature, yes. it's a group of people. So... I, we essentially want to help that grow and have it continue to have other people to help crew and support you in different types of ways. Yeah, there's a big organization. I mm -hmm. was counting the, uh, there's uh, about eight board members, maybe more, and mm -hmm. then uh, the staff, including yourself, yeah. is about 12 or so people. Yeah, 12. Something maybe like that. Maybe a little more than that, but yeah, 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do they do all day besides uh seeking out young filmmakers. Oh, uh, Open Signal has a lot of different programs. Mm. They have a new media fellowship. I myself, before I started working there, was in Future Forum, which, which was a different kind of fellowship. Um, they have exhibits. There's going to be a big Open Signal Summit in August mm. on the 10th, so people can come by and learn more about Open Signal and know about the programs. Um, we do work for hire. Like I was saying before, they film all the board meetings for the government, so it's just like a lot of different things. You can come take classes, get equipment, it's on MLK and Graham basically, and yeah. just come and check us out. Well, uh, so did you use your own uh, machinery or did you check out cameras and sound material from Open Signal? I've checked out their material before. It's very straightforward. You go talk to Noah uh, at the front desk, mm -hmm. and he gets you straight away, and, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm going through uh, different names to get my 
my equipment, but yeah, it's it's a very straightforward thing. Once you sign up for a membership there, and I think it's like a dollar yeah. now. Like yeah, oh. so now you have to like not very now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just sign up for a membership and you're like have access to this great vast world. And That's great. Zoom, so yeah. Well, uh, what inspired you to go turn? You were born in Georgia. Yeah, born and raised in Atlanta. Somehow Georgia. ended up here. Somehow I ended up in the West Coast. But that's a good place to be if you're interested in making movies. Yeah, it is because it's it's super close to um, California if you ever want to pop down there. Uh, but then they have all these. Like Portland has the, the the valleys, the mountains, yeah. and the city, so you can make it look like a, a lot of different things. Yeah, that's so, yeah. The, almost every commercial is shot here. Yeah, uh, every car commercial. Right, every <laughs> car. They want those those right. windy hills. Yeah. And uh, but what what inspired you to become a filmmaker? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's kind of a dumb one. And no, it's, it's hard not. Dumb. It's oh, it's okay. not dumb. I don't know. Um, because when I was younger, I used to like you know like any kid watch movies and try to like. Uh, pretend I was them or, or look at what they were doing and say, oh, I could tell them to do something different in mm -hmm. my voice, like direct yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So I always found that interesting, but I was also very shy. Oh. So I didn't... is probably not so much a problem anymore it, with the uh, portable mach uh, machinery that we that are, is available right. to us. Oh, no, I grew out of my shyness. Oh, okay, once, once I hit college, I was like, okay, I, I, I want to do something. So I got a camera and I started writing some more. Uh, my friend sold me her cheap camera for like $60 and I shot a very horrible short film that no one will ever see about uh, a costume designer getting attacked by her mannequins, you know, oh. things. It was very weird. It sounds great. It sounds great, but I don't think... Let's do a rewrite. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. And Tamara is also an actor. But still, audio is my... my that's not a curtain right here. No. <laughs> sound is tricky. And sometimes you just don't know what it sounds Some, like until you get it. Yeah, yeah. So once I master it, I think I'll have a full, like, scope of... Yeah. Like, I had a guest on a few weeks ago who uh, was a production assistant and producer on mm -hmm. movies. And uh, he worked on a movie with uh, Dustin Hoffman, who uh, is apparently difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. But he would still work with him again because he really knows... The, the what to do on a set for example he'll always ask the cameraman what is it mm -hmm. and that's a code for what is the um the lens size mm -hmm. and when he hears whatever it is 50 22 yeah. he knows exactly what is going to be in the frame yeah. yeah so he knows what whether he should use do anything with his hands or not mm -hmm. or just like, and having that kind of, so what you're doing is acquiring that similar kind of knowledge yeah, yeah. from work from the uh the technical end of things yeah yeah, so yeah that's part. it helps being more well-rounded because then you know like from when you're writing to when you're doing the camera work you know where to be or what it'll sound like and it gives you a little more accuracy the more you can learn you don't yeah. have to know it all but it definitely helps if you can work your way around each mm -hmm. part yeah yeah uh do you like writing too you said you yeah you I, I, I love writing um a lot of the thoughts are in my head, so I gotta put it down yeah. on paper. But yeah, that's it's like I don't know how to put them in order between acting, writing, and directing. Yeah. So I don't really have an order. Uh, but why? There is no yeah, order. there's no order. Yeah, there's no order. There's no pressure. It's all part of the soup of creativity. Yeah. But uh, did you what, did you find it hard to write a screenplay? Because uh, often they're so exact. They're mm -hmm. almost like trying to write a sestina or a, yeah. <laughs> a sonnet. They're so everything's got to be specifically it, it way. for a good reason, which mm -hmm. is the page to minute count, right. which is the big deal. But did you find it hard to? Uh, I didn't really find it difficult. Uh, I think more so it's just uh, what I'm trying to get to now in writing is less is more, mm, um, okay. meaning less dialogue exactly, is, is yes. more powerful in a, in a story. And that's kind of where a lot of films or a lot of short films or independent films are going, mm -hmm. where you kind of just see the action. Yeah. You never really hear it. So uh, that's where I'm trying to transition to because I'll get too wordy sometimes because in theater, you have to say everything. Yeah. <laughs> like you need to, the audience may not see this apple in my hand that I'm eating, but you got to tell them, and, and exactly. you imagine yeah. it. So, yeah. um, just finding the balance between dialogue and more dialogue, less dialogue. Like that. Well, there's a, a fourth person on the premises. Does she want to say anything about uh, movies or her favorite movie? 
Do you want to say anything? Oh. Mm, yes. No. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's that's good. No, no quarrels. But uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. You're, you're listening to it on the earphones. But um, uh, so, what's next for you? You've got one movie that you're about to show to the world mm -hmm. uh, in a week's time, and probably be a very hectic day for everybody involved. Oh yeah, it's full. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what what do you have next? Uh, I've got, yeah, I got two things coming up. So within the next two weeks, I'll be shooting my next short film called Blurred Bloodline mm. uh, with uh, two of my actor friends and with the help of Op Open Signal. Um, so we'll be doing that. And then in October, uh, August, I'll be starting rehearsal for a theater show mm. at Shake in the Tree called Bacchae. It is a remake of Euripides by Anne Carson. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, so the, the poet? Uh, you're, uh, Anne Carson. Anne Carson. The yeah, I think so. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I haven't read any of mm -hmm. her work, but I, yeah, I know it's she's been out here for a while. Right. So those are the next two things that I'm working on. Um, stage work. Yeah. It's a lot different from screen work. It is. <laughs> you uh, gotta hone it in. Yeah, and also like the, you gotta. You're not just talking to one person oh, next to you. It's this great big room. The back of the theater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My voice. I, I I couldn't talk for 30 minutes in a row, but 31 minutes. Then I'm starting to get. You scratchy. can do it. You just gotta talk from your dark room. Speak oh. from your dark room. You, okay. yeah, everybody's capable of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for <laughs> your encouragement. Techniques. It's all in the core. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Um, uh, what are some of your favorite movies? What are some and of some of your favorite movies, if you feel like stepping in, but don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, uh, what are your, some of your favorite movies? What are some of mine? I have a lot. Um, do, you, do you follow films or directors or uh, performers? I follow the look of the film, I think, mm. uh, and then the director, and then the film. So I like uh, She's Gotta Have It, the film, the black and white, Yeah. Um, Do the Right Thing. I'm saying a lot of Spike Lee. I'm yeah. a Spike Lee fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what else do I like? This is a lot of pressure because oh, I like sorry. a lot of films. No, it's not. not it's good pressure. Okay. It's, I, I like a lot of films. Um, what's a new film that I just saw? That's um, a good question. Uh, the, are you a fan of Charles Burnett by any chance? Because I love his films. Mm -hmm. um, are did uh, 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 are you? There was a whole wave of uh, Los Angeles filmmakers who mm -hmm. came out of UCLA and USC and started making films, and among them was Charles Burnett, amongst five or six others. Okay. And and his movies are so good, they're actually in the National mm. uh, Registry of Film. Oh, really? Uh, one of them is, anyway, okay. Killer of Sheep. Oh, so, I have seen that. Yeah. I like Moonlight. Moonlight. I saw that yeah. oh, that was really good. million yeah. times. I could watch it over and over and yeah. still be And it won the Oscar small. for Best Movie. Yeah. yeah. You it should. It, it <laughs> should <laughs> Although it almost didn't, because of that weird yeah. snafu on the stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, they did. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, Sorry to Bother You was really good, too. Yeah, Sorry to Bother That was a trippy movie. I like yeah. that. Sorry to Bother You, Moonlight. What's the that other one? Um... Um, if Bill Street can talk, I really oh, like this. Yeah, I haven't seen Barry that Barry Jenkins yet. is really coming strong. Yeah, yeah. He, is. he is. He's killing Not the game. Now, what do you think of this, the, of, of uh, the horror film access that... Uh, <laughs> do, you do not like the horror film thing. No, I'm, okay. too, I'm too scary. I don't like horror films. Okay. But I saw Hereditary. Mm -hmm. if, if, did you That's see that one? That's one of the worst ones. I know. I scary. didn't know. Nobody told me it was that bad, but I saw it, and I gave it its due, uh -huh. and... I still am still trying to get it out of my brain. <laughs> I'm still thinking that my grandma, like, I'm not, I'm watching people, like, what are y'all well, doing? That's oh, funny that's because so that's, one of the, that's one of the signal uh, features of movies, that the, the images will stay. I remember yeah. images from movies I saw when I was 10 or 6 mm -hmm. or even younger. They yeah. stick around for a long time. That movie will stick uh, that, That's a power that should not be... Uh, Used lightly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say you just you have to watch what you consume, not yeah. just food, yeah, know, visuals. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, I've been talking to Tamara mm -hmm. Lynn and Rashonda Brooks, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been talking about an event that's happening next Friday night at the Hollywood Theater, mm -hmm. which is the title oh, is again. So it's the Black Filmmakers screening at the Hollywood yes. Theater. It will be at six thirty with the pre-show by DJ Vanport. Excellent. The tickets are. Ten dollars, and then we will be having the after party at the Doug Spur, featuring DJ Cream from Excellent. Oakland, Fontaine, Brown Calculus, and those tickets are fifteen dollars. All right. Well, I want to thank you three for coming in today, and thank you, you, for you really, us. yeah, thanks. it's great to get the information out. So, yeah. thanks a lot. All right. All right.